Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six, which is the final question from the October 2023 Statistics S1 International A Level Edexcel paper. And this question is about correlation and regression. And here we have um, being given um, variables x and y, and they have the following regression equation based on the same 12 observations. So you have the regression line of y on x. And you also have the regression line of x and y. Okay, these are given. So the regression equation is basically the line of best fit. So you have x values, you have y values, okay, and you know you make basically the line of best fit between them, okay. Um, there's certain things that we work out, like for example, the sum of the x values, the sum of the y values. We work out the sum of the x squareds and the sum of the y squareds. Also, so we work out the, what x squared is and y squared is first. x squared and y squared. So you have the sum of the x squareds, the sum of the y squareds, and you have the x, the product of x and y. So you have the sum of x, y. And you use certain formulae which we have been given in the formula sheet to work out the regression line. So you can either have the regression line of y on x or the other way around of x on, on y. In the end, you'll end up with a straight line. Okay, and... You know, in this straight line, you'll have basically, you know, if it's y on x, if it's y on x, you know, I mean, it will be this one, 1 1.5x plus 1 1.5. So you have a, a line which has a certain gradient. Okay, if it's um, x on y, okay, then this will then become your x-axis and this will be your y-axis, basically. That's what will happen. And you'll have a line which will be also line of best fit. And they will basically um, intersect at a point if you drew them on the same axis. You don't normally draw both of them, you draw only one of them. But in this case, they're telling us the equations of both of them. And they're saying, find the point of intersection of these lines. Well, that can be done just simply algebraically, just solving these two equations simultaneously. So for example, um, I could take um, my y, okay, and I could replace this with y, for example. So I could take what y is equal to, which is this, and replace it this this with that. Okay, so I could solve them simultaneously. I can say y equals 1.4x, uh, sorry, x equals, I could say x equals 1.2 plus 0 0.2 times y, which I can now replace with 1.4x plus 1.5. That's probably the easiest way of this particular one um, and you end up with just x terms in the equation so you have 1.2 plus you have 0 0.2 times 1.4 that's going to be 2.8 that 2.8 x and then you have 0 0.2 times 1.5 that's going to be um, that's going to be plus 0 0.3 okay because 2 times 15 is 30 and you have to ignore two decimal places 30 1 2 yeah Okay, so now we have x minus 2.8x. Okay, in fact, this is not 2.8x. This is going to be 28 and two spaces backwards. So it's 0.28x, sorry. Let me just get that right. Okay, that's 0.28x. Why? Because 2 times 14 is 28, and we have to go back two spaces. 1, 2, 0 0.2. So it's x minus 0.28x equals 1.2 plus 0 0.3, which is 1.5. So 1 minus 0 0.28 is going to be 7.2. So 0. Point, sorry, 0, 0 0.72. 0 0.72x equals 1.5. And so we can say x equals 1.5 divided by 0 0.72, which gives us 1.5 over 0 0.72. 25 over 15. 25 over 15 and that's the x coordinate okay we need the y coordinate now the y coordinate can be found now by just reusing this equation if we want so we can say uh, we can say y equals 1.4 times 25 over 12 plus 1.5 okay so we have 1.4 times 25 over 12 
and plus 1.5. That gives us 53 over 12. 53 over 12. So the, the coordinates of the intersection of these points is 25 over 12 and 53 over 12. And that's, that's part one. So we finished part one. Okay, there's the answer to part one. Now, part two, it says, hence show that the sum of the x values is 25. Now, one of the things that we need to realize is that the lines of best fit will always pass through what's called the mean point. And the mean point is basically the mean of all the x values and the mean of all the y values. And because both of these lines pass through this one point, they both go through that one point. That's the only place where they intersect. And if they both must pass through the mean point, that means this must be the mean point. Okay, so what we just found, which is 25 over 12 and 53 over 12, this is the mean point. This must be the mean point. Okay, which means the mean of x must be 25 over 12, right? So we know how do we find the mean of the mean of x? It's the sum of the x values divided by the number of entries. So we know the mean is 25 over 12. We have to find the sum of x. We know the number of entries is 12. So if I multiply both sides by 12, we can say the sum of x is therefore going to be 25. And that's how we can show that the sum of the x values is 25. Okay, because understanding that the mean point is a point that the line of best fit must pass through. And as both of these lines intersect at that point, that's the only place they only that's the only place they both pass through. That means it must be the mean point. Because they both have to pass through that point. Okay, so there's number six A, part one and two. Now we're going to go into six part B. It says, given that the sum of x, y is 6,961 6, over 60, find the SXY. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to go back to the formula sheet. Okay, and I'm going to bring this here. That will help us, hopefully, with this question. This is some stuff from the formula sheet. Okay, so what does SXY mean? Well, it means it's like how the variance of x is with y. Okay, the variances means how how like um, you know spread out the x and y values are with each other. That's it's a, it's a it's like a an indication or a measure of that. So from the formula sheet that we see, s x y equals this and also equals this. Now this is what's going to hopefully help us here, because from the information that we have here, they've told us this bit. We know this bit from the question. We know the sum of x. We just found the sum of x is 25. We were told that as well in the, in the first part, so we could use that even. Uh, we know that the number of entries is 12. Okay, what about the sum of y? Well, for the same reason that we can find the sum of x, we can find the sum of y. The sum of y is equal to, basically, um, you know, the n times the mean of y. And the mean of y, we worked out, is 53 over 12. That's the mean point for y. So it's going to be um, the number of entries times the mean, which is going to be 12 times 53 over 12, which is 53. So we can say that the sum of y is equal to 53. So we have this, we have this, we have that, we have that. So therefore, we have everything we need to find S X Y. So S X Y is going to be the sum of X Y minus the sum of X times the sum of Y over n so that's going to be 6961 over 60 minus the sum of x which was um, uh, 25 times the sum of y which is 53 all over 12 and that will give us our answer so let's see what we get we get 6961 over 60 take away 25 times 53 over 12. Okay, and that gives us 28 over 5, which we can write as 5.6. But 5.6 is SXY. So we got SXY equals 5.6, and that's the answer to part 1 or part B. Now, part C. Okay, now for part C. It says find the product 
moment correlation correlation coefficient between x and y. All right, so for, for this part of the question, we've got to find what's called the PMCC, product moment correlation coefficient, which is sometimes given the symbol R. Okay, so this is something, again, which we can find directly from our formula sheet. If you go back to the formula sheet, you'll see that there is this line over here. And what's going to be important for us from this is this particular part of it, okay, which is SXY over the square root of S double X, S double Y. So we'll take that and put it over here. Now we've got to think about what we have from this. Um, now we have SXY. We just found out what that was. Do we have S double X and S double Y? No, we don't. Okay, how do we find those? Well, let's go back to the formula sheet and see if we can find something that will help us. In fact, we got this over here that might help us. Let's take these. Now, if we look at what we got from, from previously, um, these formula sheet, the, these formulae, we, we might think that they might help us. So SXX, this part won't really help us. But here we got the sum of X, we got N, all right, but we don't have the sum of the, the, the square of the X value. So this is something that we don't have. Similarly for SYY, we have the sum of Y, we have N, okay but we don't have the sum of y squared all right so these things we don't these things are essential for us to have for us to find these two so it looks like we cannot use these formulae to find sxx syy but there must be another way of finding it so let's go back to the formula sheet and let's go back to the question first and try to brainstorm so what they gave us in the beginning of the question is this so i'm going to copy this because this might come into, into use we know the formula for y on x and x and y the regression equations okay we know those okay so th those might help us so i'm going to collect that over here so we can look at them and brainstorm with them as well so i'll just uh, make that a bit smaller okay and also if we go back to the formula sheet we see we have this, the least squares regression of y on x is, and the regression coefficient of y on x is, and so on. So let's see if this will help us. I'm going to take this part here, and also take this back to where we are, and we'll put this all together and try to see if we can use these things here to help us find what we want. And it looks like we actually can, because this is the regression line of y on x. Okay, if we think about that here, this is the regression line of y on x. Okay, this one over here. Okay, y on x. And it says the regression line, the regression co coefficient of y on x is b equals sxy over sxx. And it says here that the least squares regression line of y on x is y equals a plus bx. So if we look at this and compare it to y equals a plus bx so this is the bx part and this is the a part so we can see here that for for this the regression line of y and x is 1.4 okay in this case b is equal to 1.4 okay so we can use that why can how can we use that because we also have this we know that b is equal to sxy over sxx all right so for the regression coefficient of y on x, you have b equals sxy over sxx. And that's when you have y on x. Okay, so in this case, b we know is 1.4. sxy we know we already worked it out, which is 5.6. Over sxx, which is what we have to find. If we rearrange this, x, s double x is equal to 5.6 over 1.4 okay which is going to be what 5.6 where's the calculator sorry let's get rid of this 5.6 over 1.4 which gives us 4 okay so sxx is equal to 4 all right so that's sxx Okay, so we now know this and we know this. Now we've got to find y, S, Y, Y. Now to find S, Y, Y, what we're going to do is we can think of the regression line of X on Y. In which case you'll have B equals S, 
xy over syy okay and the value of b would then be from from this equation here where b would be 0 0.2 okay in this case you're going to have um syy is going to be let me just do it in proper form we'll have b is equal to 0 0.2 okay equals sxy which we know is is 5.6 that's going to be 5.6 divided by and here we have um s y y um which is what we have to find so from here we can say s y y is equal to 5.6 divided by 0 0.2 so s y y is equal to let's bring that back up here for a second okay s y y is equal to 5.6 divided by 0 0.2 this time and that gives us 28 so that's going to be 28 okay so now we can say b is equal to sx uh, sorry not b r is equal to as we said here we can find r now Okay, we can say r is equal to sxy which is 5.6 over the square root of sxx which is 4 times sy which is 28 so that's going to give you what you have 5.6 over the square root of 4 times 28 which gives you root 7 over 5 so r to 3sf is going to be 0 0.5291 so 0 0.5291 goes on so r is equal to 0 0.5293 sf for your final answer unless otherwise stated and there we have the answer to this question part c of this and i think that was it yeah that was the whole question okay so for the last one it seems in the beginning that you don't have enough information to answer it however if you look at all the different equations we've got you can work out what to do okay so you've got to understand the difference between the equation of y on x and x on y okay when it's y on x this is the value of b if it's x on y this is the value of b okay and for y on x you're going to have sxy over sxx x on y xxy over syy so whatever's whatever says on that thing that's the thing that's going to be the denominator sxx here and this syy that's how you can understand that all right so that completes this question question number six which was the final question of this october 2023 paper other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region of the screen at the end of the video other questions from the topic of uh, regression and correlation can be found in the uh, playlist that will appear in this section over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video which will be linked here tells you how to use my channel to find what you're interested in thank you for watching and see you soon